So today we're going to work on adding a bulkhead. Um, open the default model and we'll just go through it quick here. I've got one, two, three, four, five points in the vertical direction. I don't want that. Um, I'm going to do three. It'll be easier to show what I'm doing with just three. Okay. So, a uh, bulkhead is a support section that's going to run across the boat. So, a lot of times, if you want to get your beam measurement from, say, your starboard side, your port side, you want to find out the width, you want to add a structural frame that goes across the boat, you want to add a bench seat that goes across the boat. We're just we're splitting the boat. We're going across it. Um, the free ship doesn't lend itself especially well to do this. Uh, there's different ways of doing it. People do it different ways. So I'm going to show you the two different ways that I know how to do it. So I'm going to click on some of these points here. Before I do that, let's show you a before before picture. Everything's nice and round. Turn these off. Smooth lines going down the side. Okay. So now we've got our, our points highlighted. Go back to the wireframe. And go to face. New face. So there you go. Now you would typically just add, split this edge, create new po control points by splitting an edge, and we would drag this to the Y coordinate of zero, and then as far as the height of this point goes, we want to match this, which is two, oh no, the, the height is 1.773, so let's go back to this point, our Z coordinate for height. 1.773 there we go we'll make it a corner and that should be it pretty simple but there is a catch let's go look at our shaded view again and you can see here there's a ripple in the side we've sucked the side in okay so it's definitely affected our model it affects the side of the boat and that's the problem with free ship and just adding one of these like that so there's a couple of different things we can do we'll go back to the wireframe uh, none of which are perfect I'm gonna add some of these lines back in there so we can kinda see what we're doing okay so we've got the green lines, and the green lines are showing an error, basically. I'm going to deselect that point that I've got highlighted. So now I've got those two lines highlighted. Go back to the shade. Let's see what happens if we take that, those two points, and we crease that edge with this button in the upper right-hand corner. Crease it. Look at that. Uncrease, crease, uncrease, crease. So you can see it didn't, we've still got a gap here at the bottom. It didn't pull all that out. It didn't pull our hull out of whack. It still looks like it's okay. So there we've got a bulkhead created. Um, let's get out of the shaded view, back to the wireframe view. It looks like our body lines are still all straight. Doesn't look like it pulled anything out of whack like it was initially. And if you see on this layer piece here, let's deselect these. It's not the one I wanted to select. Let's see if I can get this piece here. Okay. Now it looks like that layer 
doesn't go out to our control point. Let's see if I can get you this. See what I'm seeing here. This is a control point I'm talking about. You can see the yellow, the yellow grid. We've got our layer selected. It does not. The yellow grid does not extend out to there. So our layer should stop at the curvature of the hull here. And just to make sure of that, we're going to auto group this layer, make it its own layer. Then we'll go to the layer, dialog, layer one, let's we'll call it a bulkhead. And we'll make it developable. Go back in our tools section, develop plates, and there we've got it. And you can see it's a nice curved edge. So that should be good. Um, this is a fairly simple hull we're dealing with without a lot of um, longitudinal lines in it. But let's see what happens if we do it with one that's got got more more lines in the hull. So we'll open up a new model. Current model has been changed. I want to save it. No, I don't. Let's do what we originally had here. I'm going to select all these. I'm going to move them all on the same X coordinate. Two point, two point six. Get them all in line. Didn't really mess with the hull too bad. And then we'll go to face new. Okay, so we've got the same issue. Um, view it in wireframe or shade, sorry. And you can see that we messed up our hull here. Development check. Can sometimes show that better. But we've definitely warped the hull. You can see by the darker shaded area up here. Maybe if I put it in full screen, it'll be more obvious. But we've sucked that in. Right along this, this edge here. So let's see. We can do the same thing we did before. I'm going to hold down the control key and click on the screen line and see if we select all of them. Maybe I'll go down to my lower right hand corner of my body plan view and see if that'll work. That's not going to select all of them. I have to do it individually. Now we'll watch this shaded view up here and we'll see if it changes when I go to the crease. And it did. So to me, that looks like it worked pretty good. And evidently, what we're going to have to do is split this edge here, go back to the wireframe mode, wireframe, deselect what we've got selected. I'm trying to get this red line here. Create new control points by splitting the control edge into two. Gives us a control point in the middle. Uh, I know my Y coordinate, my width is at zero to make it dead center. And now, again, I'm going to match this top point. The Z coordinate on that is 1.7206. I want this to be a corner. 1.7206. Enter. And there we go. Go back to the layer. Dialog. We didn't make a layer, did we? Do it easy enough here. Got it. Auto group. It's layer one. Layer one is the bulkhead. Uh, we'll make it developable. Tools, develop plates. And there you go, that shows both sides. This is the center, this would be the port side and starboard side. So that looks like a success to me. So there's our bulkhead. So as you can see from these pictures, this method will only work if you have rounded bilges in your boat. If you have a hard shine boat, 
um, like most of these small plywood boats that I build this method will not work um, it will distort the side of the hull as you can see in these pictures it'll take the round line and make it straight um, so if you're following your gunnel from the front to the back um, instead of having a nice rounded line right where your bulkhead is inserted um, will be a sharp crease so again this this will work if you're doing canoes or something with a rounded bilge but if you're doing a plywood boat building where there's a high, hard chine um, this is going to distort your hull so the next method will show um, how to do that where you're actually creating a separate piece that's not connected to the hull and it's the only way that I use for making my bulkheads on these plywood boats okay so here's the alternative I can go to point up here and add a point it's automatically going to add this back on my zero zero so see here on the right on the profile profile view this is zero zero here on the grid so I'm essentially going to add three points so I'll move this one over here point add take this one move it over here just to get it kind of close to where I'm going to use it point add get it kind of close to where I'm going to use it here again okay so and the reason I messed with those numbers you'll see here it makes it easier for me to match up this point basically I'm going to try to set this point here right next to this point point. and this point is going to go next to this point if we're looking in the profile view and then this one will go next to this point so we're going to set the points pretty much on top of each other so my x coordinate on on this particular point that I'm dealing with up here on the perspective view put this one back 2.5 we want it just to well we'll leave it at 2.5 the y coordinate is at zero right now but we want it right next to this one so this y coordinate is 1773 I'm gonna make this one 1.7 we'll call it that way it's just a little inside you know I don't want my uh, my panels uh, running into each other you know if this is quarter inch thick plywood I would normally subtract a quarter of an inch from that Y point um, that way I know my layers don't overlap so we'll go 1.75 on the Y on that um, and then Z coordinate we would want to match the height on the green point one point seven two oh six well, let's just leave it as is for now so this point right here my y is one point two seven seven eight Now I've got the Y on the same page. 2.5 on the X. They should all be 2.5 on the X. Leave that one there. Move this one to the X coordinate of 2.5. We know the Y coordinate stays zero on that one. Z coordinate is 0.263. I'm going to put this at 0.24. I don't want it right on top. I don't want the same coordinates because then it's really hard to um, to click on it. Um, you know, if we'll come down to our plan view here, and I'm going to zoom in, and if they're right on top of each other it's real hard to move one and not the other it's hard to select the right point you're constantly fighting it so I would use coordinates that are just slightly different so now that we're here 
I'm going to go over to the body plan view because I have to do just that. Now I have to pick out my points because we're going to create a new face. Okay, so I'm on that point, so I'm going to hold control. I'm going to select all three of these new points that I just created. I'm going to go to face, new. Now I want this point to be a corner. I want this one down here. I have to zoom in on this to be a corner. Let's mess around with our perspective drawing a little bit. Okay, so by not making this point a corner, this has a natural curve to it. And it, since our points are so close, that curve should be, since this corner point, this point, and this point are all so close to the original points of the hull, that curve should be right on the money or very close to it. One way you can check that is by going to your shade and you'll see on the outside of the hull, you can see a little lip here. So we're actually overextending slightly. We have brought our bulkhead is actually sticking out of the side of the hull. So, we'll just grab our, our points and we'll start moving stuff around. Until it's not sticking out anymore. It's sticking out there. Not so much there grab our point down here. I want to move this up a little bit and I can do that in this drawing. Now let's check our shaded model again and we're still out a little bit up at the top here. So I'm going to grab this point and do it. drag this in a little bit and so you'll just mess with these points until you feel that you've got it right or close enough I'm still sticking out a little bit it's pretty uniform but ideally what I could do if this were say in inches um, you know I would take if I wanted to move this point in towards the center of the boat I would just subtract a quarter inch uh, you know, 0.25 off of um, off of my Y coordinate, and that would move that in. And then here, I could move it up by a quarter inch. So if you get the line matched perfectly, and then just move everything in based on the thickness of the material you're using for your hull, if you're using uh, a half inch material or a quarter inch material, then just move your your Y coordinate accordingly and that's another way to do it. So I hope those couple, those different ways make sense. There are certain applications where I have had to use this method um, by creating new new points, new control points altogether. Um, it's really not that bad. They both work pr fairly well um, but the nice thing about this one is that you can really control um, the gap in between your panels and it doesn't it for sure won't make your hull it won't affect the outside shell of your hull at all because it, it, it doesn't connect with the hull the computer doesn't think it's connecting with it like it does with the other method so I hope that helps with bulkheads